Hey, good day there. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today I'm going to do an unboxing video. What we have here is a mechanical keyboard that I ordered from mechanicalkeyboards.com. I haven't seen it yet. The package has not been opened, but my purpose for buying this keyboard was I wanted a more mechanical feeling kind of keyboard that I could use with my iOS devices like my iPod and iPad with writing apps to kind of simulate the AlphaSmart Neo kind of experience and also to be able to use the keyboard with uh, my regular computers. So we have our cup of coffee, AeroPress coffee. We have our yellow Ulfa touch knife. You guys remember Ulfa touch knives? We're going to slice this thing open. And by the way, the shipping on this came really fast and pretty decent. So slice this guy open. Some brown paper. Ah, my little shipping label. Okay. So here is what we have. We have the V60 Mini mechanical keyboard made in Taiwan by kbp.com cherry brown so this is using the uh, cherry MX brown switches and they call this keycap style Olivetti which reminds me of the Olivetti typewriters right so we open the box we have a keyboard layout diagram two paged front and back and it tells you all the functions of the keys because on these 60% key keyboards you have multiple um, functions for many of the keys. So here is the box. There's nice little red and black trim. First of all, let's undo this flap. Here is a plastic baggie with the USB cord. It goes from a USB mini to the standard USB connector. And the keyboard itself and it says KBP Paradise on the inside of the box. That's a really nice designed box. I have to hand it to him. Another sip of AeroPress coffee. Okay, so this is a tiny little thing and you know what? It has substantial weight to it. It really feels nice and heavy. Not too heavy, but it has a really nice heft to it. So this is a, one of these little foam uh, shipping bags, but it, it is a bag. And until I get a carrying sleeve for it, I might even use this. So let's take a look at it. So on the back side, it says KBP Paradise, the V60. Ah, look at that. Ah, look at that. Here is the close up, closer shot of the keyboard. So as you can see, it's kind of a two-tone beige color is the color style that I selected. These keycaps have front logos for the alternative functions as well as the standard top uh, logos or labels. And it's a standard Windows type of uh, operating system button and many of your same kind of buttons, your tab, caps lock, shift, control, your alt keys. This is probably the program key. Um, it gets to the alternate functions and your list and clear, uh, control, shift and enter and backspace up here. So if you look at the profile, the keyboard is a little thicker than a standard keyboard. And so according to the research I've done, you may need to use a wrist pad on the front of it, right, for your hand. We'll find out. There's the back of the keyboard. There is a the connection right here for the USB connector. And then the bottom of the keyboard has these four hefty rubber pads that we'll have to test to see how non-skid it is. And then there are dip switches underneath here in this little compartment. There are six dip switches for setting up the configuration of the keyboard. Okay, now what I have here is my little iPod touch on a little holder that I've made and I'm gonna, 
I'm going to take my USB to Apple connector and I'm going to plug it into the iPod Touch. And then I'm going to take the cable that came supplied with the keyboard and we're going to undo the little twisty tie and plug the this is a nice heavy really heavy gauge USB cable very impressive so this connector plugs into there I'm gonna turn on my iPod and I'm going to log in and then I'm going to open up a word processing app like my notes application for instance and I'm going to start a new notepad then I'm going to plug the keyboard into that and what do you think of this I don't know if you guys can see that but uh, this is the new keyboard how do you like them beans it works Wow. So the whole concern about this was whether you could get a 60% keyboard with the software layers that would still work with a small iOS device. So this has a great, these are the cherry brown switches. They don't have any rubber O-rings underneath them. The quick brown fox jumps over the darn lazy dog sitting on the porch. That's the ex extended version of that. This keyboard really feels good. On this smooth wooden table, I can't even get the keyboard to move. It is totally solid with these rubber feet. Now I have not done any configuration of the dip switches, but right now I'm very impressed with this. And if I might um, be so bold as to turn the whole rig around so you guys maybe can see it from your camera angle, I'm certainly going to have to do something with managing the wire here. Maybe I'll keep the, the wire um, bundled together with a twisty tie, but this is how I envision my writing um, mobile electronic word processing rig. And my little holder here has little adjustable screws that you can put in different positions to alter the angle of the uh, iOS device. So this is the configuration right now. This is about 11 inches, I would say, and a very small keyboard, and I'm very impressed with it. So. I'm very happy with the initial impressions of this mechanical keyboard, the V60. Okay, let me share with you some initial findings on the keyboard. And first, we'll get another sip of AeroPress coffee. So, this keyboard has a primary function, which are the actual the way the keys are labeled on top. And then there are secondary functions, which are hit or accessed with a function key which is here to the right of the space bar and it and that key is labeled on the front of it FN for function. So the way this works for instance the most common type of uh, function you might want to access would be the arrow keys the cursor control keys which happen to be on the PL colon and quote uh, um, keys up here. Um, those alternative functions you simply hold the function key down and then those arrow keys work, okay? So you hold them down and you can move the arrow keys back and forth. So when you have other multi-key command sequences, like for instance, Alt-Tab or Alt-Shift for highlighting text, you actually have to hold the function, and, well, do the Alt-Shift, for instance, and then do your function arrow. And now I can highlight text on the... Uh, in the word processing app. So it works very good. If you want to access one of the front uh, secondary layers, you simply use the function key, hold it down. Um, the number row up on top here, um, the secondary function for that is all your, your F1 through F11. So it's very, very cool. And it looks like with the notes app in iOS, I have all my functionality on that little keyboard. Okay, so here is an example of using the keyboard. 
I know the uh, screen of the iPod is probably a little too small for you to see, but um, so the way I'm going to be using this is I have this regular key, uh, keyboard cable that they supplied with me. I have it kind of tied up so it's kind of short. Now I could perhaps buy a alternative cable, but it's fine for now, right? So I have my little iPod touch holder and I have the the iPod elevated at a right angle, a correct angle for my use. I'm going to kind of have to move my left arm around the tripod here. But so let's look at, so I've typed some stuff here. Let's look at highlighting um, a little bit of the text. So I'm going to hit the sh Alt Shift. I'm going to hit the function and I'm going to do the arrow. And you can see how I can highlight that text. And I can backspace and delete it or alt tab to highlight text. So that's how you can use these secondary functions. So I like the color scheme. I thought initially that I was going to want a really colorful color scheme like the ones that WASD keyboards gives you the ability to totally customize a keyboard. but. I kind of like this muted, more nondescript because it first of all matches kind of the color scheme of my iPod, the silver and white look, kind of works good with the gray and, and beige. Um, the keycaps on here are double shot, double molded, so the letters will never wear out. And they have the little home key on the F and J or have little raised bumps. And it also has the, the molding or the printing on the front of the keycaps for the, for the alternative uh, functions, which you wouldn't have if you used custom colored keys. So overall, I'm very pleased with my initial impression of this new keyboard. And I really think this combination is a valid um, replacement or a, I should say a substitute for a um, dedicated electronic writing device such as an Alpha Smart device. Since the Alpha Smarts are no longer being manufactured, this looks like a really good alternative. And you know what? This is a mechanical keyboard and it's a dedicated writing situation, especially if you put your iOS device in airplane mode. So it's not going to suck the batteries down with Wi-Fi. Oh yeah, the other thing. So this is not a Bluetooth keyboard. It's not going to suck the batteries down of the iOS device running Bluetooth. Um, and I really like the feel of the mechanical keyboard better than a little rubbery chiclet uh, laptop kind of mobile device external keyboard. This is really an elegant solution, I think. So that's my initial um, impressions of this is it's every bit as good as I thought it would be. And I love the feel of the cherry brown switches. What a great feeling keyboard. Let's talk <clears throat> for a minute about the Cherry MX switches that I used, I selected for the keyboard. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I had chosen the Cherry MX brown switches. So Cherry is a German company that makes mechanical keyboard switches. And their MX series are <clears throat> color-coded <clears throat> to configure a certain force and a certain clickiness and a certain attributes of the key, how it feels. And I believe the cherry blues are the hardest and clickiest. And they go down from there. The browns are a little bit less than clear. And they all have, those three I think have the intermediate click feel in the middle of the keystroke. And then there's two or three other colors that have, um, linear feeling. There's no clickiness in the middle. So the big question is if you're shopping around for a mechanical keyboard, and keep in mind that the reason why a person might want a mechanical keyboard is because you're interested in simulating that typewriter kind of writing experience. Remember from the previous video I did, I talked about one of the attributes of the typewriter writing experience is the tactile feel, the mechanical interconnectedness between the writer and the machine. And one of the ways you can achieve that with electronic typing or electric typing is 
through mechanical keyboards, mechanical key switches. So <clears throat> unless you have a lot of money to spend on various keyboards, uh, there's the only other alternative is to buy yourself a little sample of the various Cherry key switches. And so several weeks ago, I bought this little sampler. This is a made by WASD Keyboards. And so let me just pull it out of the box here. So it comes with a little pack of O-rings. It comes with a pack of blue O-rings and red O-rings. And we'll talk about those in a minute. And then the keyboard, or the test keyboard, is a nice heavy piece of machined aluminum angle iron that's been, it looks like powder coated, which is pretty nice quality. It's actually very heavy. These are clear keycaps and they're the cylindrical type keycaps. <clears throat> and the colors of the keys arranged from uh, left to right are the blue, the brown, the clear, the red, the white, and the green. And so you can feel each one of the keys how how you like the way the clickiness is. Um, and after using, and I, of course when I tested all these, I'm using all the different fingers of my hands, of actually both hands, and trying to get a sense of which keyboard I would like the best with which key. And I decided on the browns, the cherry browns. Now, these keycaps pull off and you have these little O-rings that you can install underneath the keycap that gives you an additional kind of dampening. It doesn't actually affect the force of the key. What it does affect is when you bottom out the key, whether how much noise it makes. Um, so this uh, new keyboard is the Cherry Browns, but no O-rings. Whereas the Cherry Brown here, is going to be quieter. Of course, it's not mounted on a, a large keyboard. This isn't, so the resonant sound is going to be different. But um, I decided that for now, I didn't really want O-rings. But they give you two different thicknesses of O-rings. The red O-rings are the thinner, and the, and the blue O-rings are thicker. Now, you can order an entire set of O-rings for your keyboard. And with a mechanical keycap puller, you can pull off each key and put O-rings underneath if you want to dampen the sound of the keyboard. But for now, I'm going to leave the keyboard as it is. And I've selected through this WASD sampler I decided on the brown keyboard and I'm very happy with so far with my selection of the cherry browns for this 60% keyboard. So one of the other alternative layouts that I'm considering using for for writing dedicated writing purposes is not only using the little iPod touch with its little um, wooden adapter that I made but I also have my full-sized old iPad 2, and I have a little, another homemade kind of uh, adapter holder for it that it sits in there. And so this is a really nice combination also um, with the camera connection kit adapter, which I don't have with me, it's in the other room, but the keyboard plugs right in it, and it works just as good as with the iPod Touch. The thing that the iPad, the full-size iPad, is going to give you, of course, is a bigger screen, also, the newer camera and newer operating system and bigger memory size of the little <coughs> iPod Touch is more attuned and more appropriate for photography and video editing, whereas this older iPad being much more limited, it seems like it might make more sense as a writing tool. Um, it only has 16 gigs of memory, and really it only has about 9 or 10 available, um, but a bigger screen and by carrying the keyboard in a little sleeve and carrying the tablet and its little holder in a little backpack or bag of some kind, this can become a mobile writing tool that is essentially uh, almost the same size screen as a laptop computer and a better keyboard than a laptop computer. So this is very much a, a mobile, practical, really great writing uh, tool uh, using the IA Writer app, uh, which I have installed on both of these. So until next time, uh, this is Joe Van Cleve, and happy writing.